Hey guys, welcome back to another video about Russian Fishing 4 and today I'd like to show you guys a couple of spots where I prefer to fish here at Winding River. So uh, that is map number 3, it unlocks at level 7. Uh, before we start, please do note that the fish are migrating, the fish are moving. So the spots I'm going to show you guys, it does not mean that it's 100% guaranteed that you'll find the same fish as where I found them. So please do keep that in mind. Sometimes you need to move a couple of meters or a couple of feet to either left or right side before you start hitting the fish. So by all means, please do not take uh say if i bring you to a uh, spot but well, currently i'm standing at 79.90 uh, if i'm um, say we had water right here and i was fishing at this spot and you guys would see me catching a chub one after the other it's not a guarantee that you'll have it at the exact same spot like i said you need to move a bit so here it's 78.89 or you move a bit to the other side where you got 79.90 you know stuff like that okay but let's get started so we are currently over here and this is the entire river with uh, a small pond over there as well first up I want to go to uh, this place right over here so what we do is we are going to turn around and then start following this path because uh, this is one spot that I love because you can get a whole lot of traps you can get a whole lot of perch and a whole lot of pike at this particular spot so what you do is uh, you walk up to uh, about here and then we'll start diving into the bushes right over here I think we actually are very close there over there you guys can see a uh, log right over the water so we just pass along this rock and then over here so grab your spinning uh let me actually put that one on it's a sunny day like set direct to 40 reeling speed 20 gonna cast that over here is where i love like i said catching my pike and my perch and my chop uh, uh, spin fishing is pretty good if you want to do float fishing or feeder fishing pretty good as well um, note that the current is going in that direction so if you were to cast out your float your bobber in here it is going in that direction uh, give it a bit of line every once in a while then um, or you can cast out far in that direction and take some line when you're uh, float fishing but this is one of my preferred spin fishing spots let's see we can hook something I'm doing a sort of stop and go retrieve where I give one full turn on the crank wait like a second or two and we'll give it another and here we go we hooked into something up the drag a bit let's hope I am not gonna lose the fight but he is taking line oh, and that is typical pike behavior what happened oh, right there all of a sudden that burst and trying to make a run towards us there we go need to make sure that I keep tension on the line like so that was a bit of a hat shake he tries to get off oh buddy you have to come on with us he's taking another run Oh, and he got off. He got off. Lower the drag again. Because he took a bit of line. And he got off, but he might still be chasing it. We'll just continue. Like so. So, 107.89. A bit where I'm saying you can stand a couple of feet more in that direction or move back a bit. Uh, but this is one of my preferred spots when I'm going off to park and perch and chop and this will, uh, will definitely do uh, you can also do some flip fishing uh, right over there we got some lily pads and whatnot you can float fish for perch it's an awesome spot uh, right over there but also there along the line of reeds 
Um, and sometimes you also get a couple of cob, so that is uh, nice. But in general, I prefer this spot the most for going after pike and perch. And do one more time. Let's see. You manage to something else. It's bright and sunny, so should be full activity here. Particular pike, they love sunny days and early mornings and. Evenings is when they become most active. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got something on. Not giving a big fight, but yeah, here we go. We caught ourselves a nice perch. Awesome. 380. So, this over here is for pike and perch and chub. I'm gonna store this one away a bit. Now, if we move over here, we see some more dead trees in the water. Uh, in general, that trees are awesome uh, for park and perch, so that is definitely what you would love to try out. By the way, uh, this one over here is nice for carp. Carp fishing right here is a good spot. Uh, moving on, we got some more dead trees again. Some really good for park and perch. Xander, uh, uh, you might encounter those as well here. Let's move a bit over here. We'll get to the campsite in short notice. Now, camp is over there and this is another one of those awesome spots. Uh, this is a bit a mixture of everything. If you want to go off the pike, it's good. If you want to go off the perch, it's good. Sander, but also carp and tench are uh, pretty good here. But definitely a great spot to go. And then over here, this again is like park and perch territory. That's uh, grab this one. Direct right to 14. Just gonna cast over there. So I'm now in between the dead logs and we've got a bunch of lolly pads. Um, make certain that you'll not get snagged. But try to cast with a bit of accuracy. Obviously, when uh, when you're just starting out, it can be a bit difficult, but that is definitely uh, you do not want to lose your lures, especially at a low level. By the way, I'm on my YouTube account right now, so that's why uh, you guys see that on this one I'm currently level seven. Now another uh, technique that in particular works really good for Zender and for catfish is skittering. I'll do that in just a second. Now what the skittering is, is actually let me put that one on because I prefer with that one I am going to set my reel and speed to 50 and I'm gonna set direct to uh, 20. I'm gonna cast that out over there. Not going to close the bill yet. We'll just set down a rod like so. Now we press Y to close the bill, and now we are tapping Y. So every other second, give it a tap, just like so. And what it does is it will actually lift the lure off the bottom at a speed, and then when you pause, it will set down on the bottom. So it will just hop along the bottom like this. At a fast speed, and that entices both predatory fish as well as uh, catfish. So um, I've not caught one today, not yet. Um, catfish are mostly uh, during evening times. It's a bit better for them. And murky waters, I love murky waters. Uh, but this is one of uh, the two spots where I do catch my catfish from time to time. Uh, Zender, like I said, and uh, Pike. Perch will also go after this technique. Now, and the moment that you see your rod tip is going to bend all the way, you know that you got something on and then you'll just pick it up. Start reeling in. A couple of meters. There we go. 
give it one more try. Move on to the next spot. Over there. And set it down. Here you go again. Uh, the line that I'm using on this one is actually um, blue green, so it's a bit hard to see. But if you're using, for instance, uh, say black line, you can actually see that the line will make a curve like this before it tightens up again. And we just lost the fish, it says. So, push the fish, fish on, but lost it. Must have gone on and off in like a second, because I did not see my rod moving. Apart from me just doing these taps. Sometimes you can wait a couple of seconds in between before you give it another tap. So you let it rest a bit longer at the bottom. The lure. Nope, unless a perch jumps on in the last couple of meters. Oh, I'm blanking out on this one. Okay, let's pick this one up again. And tuck it away. Now, we're moving on across uh, the border. Right here. This is another great spot. So you got that trees on the left side and on the right side. From this angle, it is a bit hard. Pass right in between, but if you go over here and then turn around, you can actually make that turn. Let me readjust this one. That speed back to 20 is what I prefer. Uh, most of the time, you can also. Ooh! <laughs> and what did I just say about casting? <laughs> A bit accurate. <laughs> that was so not accurate, casting right there in between. Very, very close to a uh, lock on the left, that tree on the left. But well, we looked out, did not get snagged, so we are lucky. But this is another great spot. I'm a bit low on time, so I need to move on. I can only show you guys one uh, once. No, let's do it. let's do it twice, and let me actually put that one back on. Do love to catch some things. Uh, a good thing from here we go, we got something on. A uh, perch. Let's see. I'm not entirely sure. No, look at that. We caught ourselves a chap. Nice, nice. Chips are not really giving you a huge fight. Uh, no, this is a tiny chub. Uh, also caught uh, one over well over a kilogram earlier on. Um, these are are good. They will pay you a bit of money. The bigger ones will definitely pay you big money. And uh, XP wise, they're they're pretty good as well. So, but this here is another good spot for pack and perch and chub. Now, if we move along, right there, you guys can actually. Already see you. Come on, move past the tree, please. Thank you. You can see that tip right over there, and that is actually this one. We'll go to it. We'll, uh, we'll walk this end. Uh, standing over here, casting out into the deep there, and then do skittering. That is my second spot for um, catfish, uh, but also one of the best spots for uh, at least so far for me that work for asp 
Uh, it worked for the traps, it worked for Xander, it worked for uh, not, n Pike not necessarily. I did not catch as much Pike here as I was catching here in this, this section of the river. Uh, but from time to time, Pike as well. Um, but mainly it was Perch, it was Xander, uh, the occasional Asp. Asp are a bit rare, but they're great. Uh, they're great fighters by the way as well. I caught 2.8 kilogram and it was giving me one heck of a fight. It was not on this account. I don't think I could have managed it with uh, with my Corona rod. Um, and then also uh, catfish, like I said. So go stand over here and do the skid ring that I just uh, showed you guys earlier. That will definitely be a good thing. You'll pass this three and a half meter depth section, then you go into the one and a half meter section, and right from this deep end, fish love to chase it. So that is a truly good spot uh, for spinning. Now, when we get to float fishing, it's actually this spot over here that gave me a lot of chops. It gave me the occasional uh, crayfish, it gave me clams, uh, and over there, when I was fishing with the feeder, uh, oh, hang on, the other way around. Here. Over here is where I've got my fair share of bream. Uh, this section there. That was actually pretty good. Uh, feeder rod, put a maggot on, cast it over here. I had hook size, uh, there was uh, between hook size 18 and hook size 12. And that worked perfectly. Um, so that is uh, is a good spot for bream. Uh, also carp, common carp, Persian, Christian, uh, you got it here. Uh, but this particular section right here, with the lily pads, this is where I caught my chops. Now, if we take this, and I've got my bamboo here, and we set the depth actually to uh, 53, 54 centimeters, uh, even though that there is a current, oh, actually, I mean, I'll let you do a proper cast. Even though there is a current, it will actually stay on the bottom. Right here, we get the message that it's on at the bottom, and uh, this is not the perfect float for it. Let's actually swap to my telestick. Go. Um, but this is a good spot. So right now, you guys can see that current is taking it. We also got a message that current is taking it. Um, but it will at some point stop being taken by the current. There, it starts to slow down already a bit. Uh, and this for me was where I caught most of my chops. Uh, in particular when we had overcast days and when we had cloudy days. From time to time also on sunny days, even though chop are, are more leaning towards uh, the darker days. But on sunny days, from time to time, I also had some luck here. Uh, in general, maggots work pretty good if you want to do some more uh, clams and stuff like that. Uh, crayfish or bloodworms, they, they work perfect as well. Uh, with maggots here, uh, next to a common carp, you also get, uh, well, you obviously a chub, uh, bream, but they're more abundant uh, across from here. Um, gobies, river gobies as well. They, uh, they do pretty good work here. Let me actually put that one on. Currently it's night, so biting will slow down but we got something that's interested not entirely sure what it is bleak by the way bleak here there we go he is scaring is that a bleak or a river goby no nope. we caught ourselves a river goby uh, these are uh, funny looking uh, creatures i actually prefer these over goby hats but these are the river gobies and they are uh, nice fish they are tiny and they will not pay you a whole lot uh, but still, it's a good fish. So this particular spot right here, if we look on the map, it is about here. Where, um, sorry, here. There we are. Okay, uh, let's move on. And over here now, it is a bit hard to see in the dark. Actually, I walk up to the houses, those are over there. Now here we got these white birch. Go down. I'm actually see in here we have the start of this um here. 
this one, this small island. You can stand right there, you can actually fish there. There's a current that takes it down. Uh, but if you fish really close to shore, those are a pretty good spot for carp. Okay, let me see. Right over here, we get over the rise. Then down here, this is actually a spot. I know it's a bit hard to see in the dark. Um, so but you got a bush over there, you got a bit of a steep incline over here. Uh, and then you got reeds over there. So if you just grab your rod. Now for this you do need to hold it in hand. But if you start casting out, you need to wait a bit. There's actually a bump in the river in this particular section and it will stop your float. Come on, stop it. <laughs> Ooh, always a joy here. Well, there we go. Now he has stopped. He is a bit and an inkling. Um, but this is a, is a good spot fishing for carp. Uh, again, I put your leader like uh, 55 centimeters and that will do it. Now obviously, again, it's night time. It will be a bit hard. In particular, when you're fishing with the bamboo, do not set it down. You need to... This is a spot where you can just like... Uh, with, with one rod that you fish or with one rod, uh, one pull and, and one uh, feeder. Um, but for the rest, this is... Uh, you do not have the space here to set like three rods in a row. Um, also, during daytime, this is actually quite an active spot. It's a bit of a hot spot, so to say. You see a lot of fish uh, come through. And uh, Crucian and Prussian, mostly uh, common roaches uh, from time to time, uh, goby, uh, goby hats or river gobies. Um, but it is a good spot. And from time to time, also, you'll be able to catch the um, uh, common carp. Right. Here at this section, uh, eighty-one point hundred. You guys can see it in right corner. Uh, and like I said, if you fish really close, that is not close. That is close. <laughs> right there on the edge, you'll actually see fish spawn and swim up to uh, to watch your bait because you're so uh, close to the shore. Okay, so but this is the spot. So with the birch tree there. Got one over here, just go through the bushes. Then uh, this spot, thanks to uh, courtesy to uh, Squatchcraft, by the way, who showed me this spot. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, over here, we've got a bridge. And I must honestly say, I did some fishing here, but was not catching a whole lot. But there are others who did succeed here. Uh, one of the methods is stand on the bridge with spinning gear and cast, uh, doesn't matter which way. Can cast in that direction. You can cast in this direction. Uh, perch mainly is what's been called. Uh, occasional chirp as well. Uh, so that seems a good spot. Uh, also a carp. Now note that the f current is going in this direction, so it goes from south to north. Uh, so if you're throwing your float in over there, it will end up all the way over there. So do uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but over here it was mainly. Uh, Common carp, uh, Crucian carp, Prussian carp, uh, roaches, uh, bleak, all that kind of stuff. If we move over the bridge, and that will actually be the last spot I'm going to show you guys. Over here, there's lots of uh, fishing that you can do as well, a lot of uh, good spots. But we are moving on and on and on. Till we come over here. Now this particular spot is this right here. So we we walked up, went over the bridge, and you followed it, and we walked up to there. And this is awesome for pie for a uh, carp. Sorry, my bad for carp. Carp bream is what you got here. Um, common carp, the big common carp because you got a hole in here that is two meters deep and this is awesome for uh, for those fish uh, right here a lot of Prussian and Crucian and common roaches and bleak uh, over here the big uh, common carp over here along that side of the shore as mostly bream and then here there's also tench 
on uh, this side. So uh, you can fish it from here. You can go all the way up to here. If you cast out to there, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, common uh, carp, uh, Prussian, Crucian, common roaches, uh, bleak. Uh, if we move over to this side, what I myself prefer to do a lot is take the feeder, cast it over there, put it right here in this middle section, because that is the 2 meter deep section. Uh, put the feeder over there and then with my fixed balls or with my metrol bolognese fish this section. So right over here, uh, 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters uh, here in uh, the bigger part, 1 meter, 120. That is, uh, is all fine. If you want to target bleak a bit more specifically, 17 centimeters, so 1.7 is good. Fish a bit here, close to the reeds, not in the middle, but more here. That is a good spot. Um, if we move a bit further, right here along these reed lines is where I have caught my tensions. And not a whole lot, not unlike in comparison to Old Fort, the next map. Uh, this definitely is good for uh, for tench, where we have the pond getting a bit smaller before it goes there into the river with uh, with the current. So this is a good place to be at. And last but not least, what I showed you guys earlier, this particular spot right here. So that is this little tip. So this is ideal for skittering. Let's give it one final try because I so want to catch something. <laughs> okay, uh, speed. Uh, no, that is drag. Drag to 20. Speed set it to 50. Casting out all the way over there. There we go. Uh, set it down. Now obviously it's night so it's a bit hard to see so what I am going to do is I am actually going to angle this in that direction. Right there. Because now if I set it down I can actually come on see my line a bit better because it's a contrast with uh, the green and just do like this. There we go. And you can see the line going slack and then it's getting tight again by the current. The final, like, say, five meters, this final stretch, here the water is really shallow, so the line will not make those big drops the moment you start tapping them wide. Um, but it's still, it's, uh, it's a good place to uh, be. Sometimes you get a perch jumping on it and uh, find a couple of meters. And like I said, this works pretty good for me with asp. Work pretty good for me with uh, uh, pike. Uh, not that much, but still a couple of pike. Xanders, catfish, asp. That is what we can all find here. I'm not sure if you hooked anything. The line remains tight. You know, I'm tapping it. And it's also not bending the rod, so... Maybe because we're really close now. I think that's a reason. We're really close. Got nothing on this time. One final time. And then I'll show you guys my catches. Let's set this down. So you guys can have a bit of uh, an inkling as what I've caught in those spots. I must say I've not caught pike yet because I was fishing for pike but then I realized I did not have a whole lot of time to make this video so I had to uh, cut fishing for pike short. I was hoping to catch one during the video, but alas, we've not caught one so far. Um, I've not caught an asp, and also, also have not caught uh, a zander. Who knows, we might be lucky in a uh, few moments. Currently, I'm using a gold spoon on this one. Um, 
It might have been better if I put a spinner on it because it's night. Uh, vibrations will help the fish uh, locate my lure. But that is something that you guys can uh, try and uh, test out later. And that line right down at the last couple of meters. Line is uh, staying tight. That's why it's so shallow. Can no longer properly properly lift it up. Okay. So let's pick that one up again. Let's store it away. So here are uh, the catches. Uh, we got two river goies. I caught a couple of chaps. I caught one common carp. Uh, the perch that we hooked earlier. A um, couple of common roaches. Uh, here I caught a couple of uh, crucian. There's not a single crucian in here. I <laughs> see now. Uh, I've got a tench. As you can see I've got a bleak. Uh, and here I have a white-eyed bream. Uh, these were all caught in, within 48 in-game hours. So I caught a total of 23 fish uh, in, within the past two in-game days. So that is uh, is not a bad thing. And the majority of that was caught um, in my uh, Let's Play video. Where I went uh, from level 7.5 to level 7 3 quarters. Um, but here at least you guys can see, so these I caught actually here, that is where I caught the white bream. I caught the tench over here, I caught the majority of the uh, carp right there. Um, over here when I was fishing for a uh, chub to show you guys in this video, I caught that common carp. Uh, right here is where we caught the perch and like I said this is like heaven for pike as well. Um, over here. Uh, there is uh, a lot of carp that you can go after. Um, bleak is also good for uh, for this section. Uh, I was not lucky, but I know from others they were lucky in catching a lot of perches from the bridge and around the bridge area. Uh, a lot of um, chubs and uh, Prussian and Crucian carp, uh, stuff like that. Um, so over here is skittering here. This is for uh, catfish and asp and zander. Uh, over here as well. This is a four and a half meter depth uh, deep spot. So that is also a great spot to go after. Uh, here this little, um, how do you say it? Uh, inkling, uh, this little gap over here. That is again good for uh, carp and stuff like that. And this one over here as well. Um, small chunks that, that the river, uh, how do you say that, good grief. So guys, I'm a bit distraught at the moment, um, but I think you guys know what I mean. So the, these little notches, so say, into uh, the river, those are, um, there's a bit less current there, so those, those are great places for uh, carp and tench and all that kind of stuff. Okay guys, so, and then last but not least over here, this is great for feeder fishing and for your, uh, using your cane and not be uh, affected by the current that takes place in all the rest of the river. So guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Um, do not forget to like, do not forget to subscribe. Uh, if you got any comments, leave them down below in the video. And I hope to see you guys next time again with another video about Russian fishing for. Bye bye for now and thank you for watching.